today we're going to talk about enthalpy or heat of reaction. We remember this because there's an H in there, which will be helpful um, in a couple days when we have something different. So enthalpy is the heat of reaction. Um, basically, it just a little reminder that exothermic means that your delta H is going to be a negative value. If it's endothermic, that means your delta H is going to be a positive value. And if you have a situation where heat is given off, it exits, well, that sounds exothermic. So what would happen is the surroundings would, would feel warm. So the temperature of this water would rise. And this second one, we have uh, heat is taken in. So that sounds like it's being absorbed. That's an endothermic reaction. And the temperature of the water would drop. It would become cooler. So we have seen this type of information in these types of problems. This is nothing new for us, but let's remind ourselves how we do this. If we're given a reaction and we're told our delta H equals negative so many kilojoules, what that means is since it's negative, that tells me that it's going to be an exothermic reaction, so therefore I put it on the right-hand side. So negative, oh, I don't know why I just did that. So it becomes plus 8389 kilojoules. All that negative does is tell us which side of the equation it goes on. So now that we've got that written down, we want to figure out how many grams of hexane, so how many grams of this must be burned to release this many kilojoules of heat. So we know if I wanted, I could even write down the kilojoules that we know right here to times 10 to the 14 kilojoules. That's what we know we're trying to figure out grams. So we always start with what we're given, what we know. 2.00 times 10 to the 14 kilojoules. We don't want it as kilojoules. We know that if we can get to moles, we can convert to something else within the reaction. So this is when I look and I say, my ratio, this many kilojoules, for this many moles. So I've got two moles, and that's going to be for my hexane. And I've got 8389 eight, kilojoules. So now we've got our answer is moles of hexane. We get rid of our moles of hexane and go to grams of our hexane. And one mole has a mass of 86.2 grams. When you add it all up, multiply it out, you get this many grams. So we've seen those types of thermochemical equations before, those reactions. Now the question might be, hey, how does this number right up here, how do we know what that is? And that's um, enthalpy. We can figure something like that out based on Hess's law. So Hess's law, often a chemical reaction can be thought of as occurring in a series of steps, and these steps, when added together, lead to the same final chemical reaction. Each reaction will have its own unique delta H, and when the delta H's of the steps are added, this will give the delta H of the final reaction. This is because del delta H is path independent and doesn't depend upon how you get to the final equation, only what the final equation is. So what that means, if you have an example, like this, where you want to figure out the delta H for a reaction such as this right here, what's listed for us. Well, we know that I'm just going to start with my carbon, since that's the first thing I see in the reaction. It really is just a little puzzle where we're trying to make things fit. I want five carbons on the left-hand side. I want five carbons as a reactant. So I look and I see right here I've got one carbon. I need to make five of them. So I need to take this whole thing, not just the reaction, but also my enthalpy changes, and multiply it times five. So it becomes five carbons plus 5O2 yields five CO2. I'm going to deal with the delta H's in a minute. So now I've got that. Um, I can go to my, my hydrogens, and I see that I've got six hydrogens that I want to have, but in my second reaction, I've only got two. At least they're on the right side of the equation, so that's good. Which, when I say the right, I mean the correct side of the equation. They're both on the left-hand side. So I know that I just have to multiply that through by three. So everything gets multiplied through 
by 3, and it becomes 6H2 plus 3O2 yields 6H2O. And then finally, I want 1 C5H12, but I want it on the right side, not on the left side. So I happen to have 1, but it's on the wrong side. So just like you think, you multiply it through times the negative of that, so negative 1. And all we do is flip it, and it becomes 5 CO2 plus 6 waters yields C5H12 plus 8 O2. Now, in order for us to do this, we didn't just multiply the reactions. We also multiplied our delta H values. So our delta H values, when we do this math right here, become negative 1967.5, and that's in kilojoules, negative 1714.8 kilojoules, and positive 35. 36.6 kilojoules. So all I'm saying here is that we made sure that these values that we multiplied through our reactions, we also did that with our delta H values. So now all you have to do is add it all up and make sure it works out. Remember, if it's on the same side of the arrow, you add them together. If it's on opposite sides, you would cancel them out. So in this case, I would get uh, some carbon dioxide that cancel. I see here I can add these together. I've got 5O2 and 3O2. That gives me a total of 8O2s. Ah, but I've got 8O2s over here that cancel out, so that cancels out. And is that it? No, I have some waters also that cancel out. So what is left should be what I was looking for. 5C plus 6H2 yields C5H12. And you would also have to add all of these up, and you get a delta H value of negative 145.7 kilojoules. So that's how we get that information. If you know some of the pieces and parts, the little um, individual reactions, you can just add them together. And that's known as Hess's Law. Okay, um, another example that we're not going to go through. Heats of formation. So the heat of formation for a substance is the enthalpy change of a reaction in which one mole, I'm going to come back to that, one mole of a substance is produced from its elements. The elements must be in their natural state, and um, we're talking about at zero degrees Celsius in one atmosphere. The heat of formation of an element in its natural state is zero. So you'll see that. You have some data tables that you'll look at for that. And delta H can be calculated for any reaction using a standard heat of formation table, that's what I'm referring to, in the following equation. So here is our equation. Um, you know, I said I'll refer back to this. Now is as good a time as any. We are talking about one mole of a substance that's going to be produced. So for example, if you had a reaction that was something like 2Li, plus Cl2 yields 2LiCl. That would not be the way you would want to, to write that. What you would end up looking up or in writing is you would divide everything by 2 because we need to form one mole of this. So I need to divide this by 2, therefore I divide everything by 2. So it becomes Li plus 1 half Cl2 yields LiCl. Again, that's the important thing. We have one mole of that. And then our reaction that we're going to be using. I don't know if you can see the background. There's a faint little picture of something that's going to help us remember this. This is our Big Mama equation. And the reason it's the Big Mama equation is because we use this for everything. All sorts of, um, we're going to use it with entropy when we talk about that. We're going to use it with Gibbs. Const, uh, gives free, free energy, so we're going to use it quite a bit. Um, and the way we would read this is that our heat of reaction or heat of formation is going to be equal to, we have a, a sigma sign, which that stands for the summation of our products 
minus that for our reactants. So you're going to add those all up, and it's always just going to be the sum of those. So you might have different amounts of reactants and products, but you always add them up. Okay, let's go ahead and do some examples. Here's our example again. Okay, we just have one example to do. It says to use the standard heat of formation table to determine delta H for the following. And you will need to look these values up on a data table, which is posted on the website or hopefully you have in your hands. Um, here we're given a reaction. Remember, we know our products and our reactants. Uh, we know which ones are which. So we can say that the heat of our reaction is going to be equal to, and remember Big Mama, it's the sum of our, of our products minus that of our reactants. So we're going to start with our products. I'll make myself a little note here. Products. So I'm looking at my iron, and it was mentioned, in fact it's probably worth underlining, it was mentioned right here that an element in its natural state will have a heat of formation of zero. And you look it up on your, your sheet, and sure enough, that's what you end up seeing, is that for iron, it ends up being a zero. I'm going to go ahead and show all the work anyway, even though it's a zero, and I know mathematically it's not going to affect it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say it's two, because I've got a two right here for my uh, number of moles. So two times zero, and then I'm going to add that to three, times, and I look up carbon dioxide as a gas on my reference sheet, and I see that it's negative 393.509. So I have just done the summation of the heat of formation for my products. So that's the products. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract that of my reactants. So here's my note reactants. And I look over at my reactants and I see I have one of my iron three oxide. So one is going to be multiplied times, I look it up on my table, negative 824.2. And then I'm going to add that to three times carbon monoxide, which I look up on my data table is negative 110.2. 525. So there, everything's set up. Now I just have to plug it into my calculator. And ever so quickly, you get it to something like this. And then your final answer should be negative. 24.752 kilojoules. So there you go. That's your uh, heat of reaction for that reaction.